Happy Thanksgiving, Internet. This is Daniel from Driving Dragons, and today I'm just going to take a quick minute to talk about food at your gaming table. Stick around. Well, guys, today is Thanksgiving, and thought it'd be a little bit, uh, a little bit apropos to speak about food and how it affects our gaming tables. It's definitely part of it. It's a big part of the social aspect of the game, which is something I find to be very important, all things considered. And now, obviously, this is going to pertain predominantly to the groups that still meet in person. And I personally feel that that's one of the big things that's kind of lost. Uh, there's, there's some good to the online community and to the virtual tabletops and, you know, Discord and play and that sort of thing. There's, there's definitely um, some major benefit to that. But I think there's also, like anything else, there's going to be some drawbacks. And part of it is that I've always felt that the social aspect of the game is very important. Um, bonding with that group of people that becomes a, you know, that become close friends and people you can count on, at least hopefully. And food to me has always been really important. I mean, I'm a southerner, come from southern Louisiana. We eat, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And that can be, it can add a lot to your table, the way you guys handle food and uh, refreshments and whatnot, and it can add a lot to the social aspect too. So, just a couple of things. Um, one, it's very easy to have themed food um, for your games. Dragon Lance is getting ready to come out for 5e for Dungeons and Dragons, and spiced potatoes are not difficult to make. And even if you're not even if you're one of those people who can burn water trying to boil it, uh, you can also have things like you can pick up spiced potato wedges from the grocery store pretty easy. Uh, and they're usually pretty cheap. So you can have themed things that come into your meal. You can go out and you can make stews and you can get turkey legs and smoke or roast them and have that kind of fantasy tavern feel for your... Uh, for your food, you can, you know, especially when you have your holiday themed games like, you know, St. Patrick's Day or Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween, you can have stuff for those. But, you know, if you're playing Gumshoe or you've got a noir uh, Call of Cthulhu or Pulp Cthulhu game that you've got going on, you can get things that match that. Rope it into your, you know, as a, as a game master, you can rope it into your, uh, you know, into your story, too. So maybe, you know, you're that hard-nosed, hard-boiled detective on the streets of New York, and, you know, here's an NPC that's pushing that hot dog cart, that hot dog cart down the road, or you're in Chicago, and they're pushing that hot dog cart down the road, um, and you're getting information from them, but you've also got those Chicago-style hot dogs there on the counter for, for everyone. Um, you just get with your group ahead of time and say, hey, look, you know, let's all pitch in. Let's get these things. Let's put it together. Go buy them from a from a restaurant, or you can pick them up from and make them yourself. And it can add a lot to the, it'll add a lot to your table. It can help with that immersion. But more importantly than anything, I think it's people coming together and working together on something that's not inside the game. And it brings in that additional camaraderie, and it brings in that additional those additional social bonds, and you know adds more to the game as a whole than just being snacks. Now, it obviously, it takes multiple different, uh, multiple different approaches. You have the classic, you know, we're going to run out and hit that dollar menu party pack. It has the, we're going to cook food. We're going to potluck. It has the bringing chips and soda and dips and stuff like that. There's a hundred thousand different ways that you can put things together when it comes to feeding your tabletop role-playing group and coordinating it. And as a game master, you can take your time to coordinate that yourself. And, or, you know, it can be one of the players who's in charge of it. But I think it's actually kind of a, a strong aspect of the game that 
is overlooked often. A uh, couple of things that I think are good to have in your repertoire that are great for feeding the table. Um, I'm from southern Louisiana, so gumbo and jambalaya are big things. You can make a large amount for a large group of people, and it's relatively inexpensive. As a matter of fact, I can make a pot of gumbo that can feed six or seven people for less than it takes two people to go to McDonald's these days. You know, you go to a fast food restaurant these days, you're spending 20 bucks for two people. Meanwhile, I can make a pot of gumbo for less than $25 that'll feed, you know, six or seven adults and still have leftovers. Very easy to make. Stews are very good for communal. Some communal dips are very easy. You know, things like you do for Super Bowl parties. Um, wings can be very easily made, baked, fried, you know, or, or grilled. Um, grilling. You know, kebabs and that sort of thing can be made cheap and be made for everybody and be part of that social aspect. Um, and uh, chilies, you know, things like chili can be made for large groups very easily. So there's a ton of stuff. Chartreuse boards, they don't require really any cooking. Um, they're really common with baby showers and gender reveals and that sort of thing. They're very good for the D&D table. You pick up your veggie tray or you chop up your veggies to make your veggie tray. A little bit of ranch, a little bit of blue cheese, some carrots, you know, carrot sticks and broccoli and cauliflower and radishes and, you know, maybe some olives. You know, you got your deli meats, your summer sausages, your crackers and cheeses, and basically all you need is a cutting board, a knife, and a big plate, and everybody can, you know, have a have decent little snacks that are, you know, right there for everybody. Each person brings a little bit. Um, not to say there's anything wrong with the good old fashioned pot luck Cheetos and Mountain Dew, but you know, a little bit extra sometimes can make things a little bit nicer for your table and can you know, can help out in that way. So and it's very inexpensive even if you're I mean, I've been there, I've been rolling pennies for gas broke and getting together with buddies to scrounge up enough some dollars to hit the, the dollar menu back when those existed. But we found out real quick that it was cheaper for us all to pitch in and me to make a pot of gumbo than it was for all of us to pitch in and hit the dollar menu. So it can be very helpful there too. There are a couple of things that I would say that, um, that whoever's coordinating food for your table and however you guys choose to handle it, there's one thing I think that there are a couple of things that need to be addressed. One is special food needs. All right. Special food needs um, got to be handled kind of with care. Now, you got them into two broad categories. You've got the minor stuff. So, for instance, if I know for a fact that I've got somebody who's allergic to seafood at my table or allergic to onion at my table, it's not difficult for me to just omit seafood or onion. Um, if I've got somebody who is vegetarian, it's not usually too difficult to make like a meatless dip or a meatless uh, a meatless stew or something like that, even if it means making a little bit extra. So the big thing is, is just communicating and working together on that so that everybody gets what they're looking for. And then, of course, you have minor health things. Now you have other more the other side, you have more extreme things. Maybe you've got like a hardcore vegan. Um, my dad had a friend whose daughter was like that, and she almost blew up a business lunch because they're all out of business and did hibachi. And she threw a temper tantrum because there was meat nearby her food on the grill. Um and you don't want that kind of thing coming up at your table. So when you have people who have the more extreme stuff, like a hardcore vegan, or maybe you have a um, an Orthodox Jew who keeps kosher, or a Muslim who keeps challah, or a Catholic like me who is doing certain kinds of fasting, um, or somebody who has more extreme health concerns, or more extreme dietary concerns, you can address those ahead of time in a way that have, makes them feel included, but doesn't lead to this turning into a cooking class where everybody's having to make multiple different things and you're distracting from the game. Um, those people may be an exception to the next thing I'm going to talk about, 
which is the bringing their own food. Because that is the next thing that I'm going to bring up is that you don't, don't be that guy. And when I say that guy, what I'm talking about is, and I'm sure a lot of us have seen it, even in the more traditional, hey, we're all going to bring chips. We're all going to bring stuff for everybody to share. You always got that one guy who's like, well, that's okay. I'm not going to share any of the food, but I, I, I got Subway on the way here. Uh, you know, He shows up and he's got a quarter pounder with cheese, large size fries, Coke, stuff from McDonald's. And he's like, well, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, it's okay. You know, I don't need any of these chips or drink anything. I didn't bring anything for everybody, but I picked up my meal on the way home, on the way here. Don't be that guy, okay? Don't be the person who always shows up with the six-pack of beer for himself and the food that he wants and that he has no intentions of sharing and he's not going to share with everybody else. Oh, and once again, outside of the exception of somebody who has extreme health or, you know, more dietary concerns that make it more of a hassle to kind of accommodate. The reason I say this is it's not saying that there's anything particularly wrong with basically saying, you know what, I don't like what everybody else is eating, so I'm going to get something for myself and I'm just not going to partake. That sets a person apart from the rest of the group, which defeats the entire purpose. The entire purpose is for everybody to come together, for everybody to feel like they are part of the group, like they are part of this collective social arrangement and when you do that you ostr- you don't you didn't just ostracize yourself but and this is just human nature you're gonna have people who are like I, we, we get it this guy's too good for us he doesn't want to be part of the group yeah he literally it's like I guess he decided he was gonna go and pick up a subway sandwich that he's gonna eat by himself because then he gets to have all of his five bucks or six bucks or whatever that sandwich costs instead of putting his six bucks into the pot and then feeling like maybe he only got three dollars worth of food out of the deal because he didn't eat as much or whatever the case may be. Oh, uh, don't be that guy because it's just too easy for that to be taken more or less the wrong way and for it to defeat the entire purpose of having a communal social experience. Um, it's kind of the food equivalent of being the guy who you know always tries to weasel in some kind of goofy character or you know always wants to somehow be the European style knight in shining armor when you're playing Oriental Adventures or has to be a samurai in your Native American themed campaign or your your Mesoamerican themed campaign always has to be something like that is always trying to weasel in something different or special we all know that guy. Don't be that guy with food either. Um, so that's what I got to say. Tell me what you think. Um, personally, I think that the shared food and the communal, um, that communal aspect of the game is very, very important. and is a big part of what makes tabletop role-playing games special and meaningful. And just let me know what you guys eat at your table in the comment section below. But till then, like, share, and subscribe, and have a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope that both your family's table and your gaming table are full and happy um, going forward throughout this Thanksgiving weekend. Talk to you next time.